Hey, hello and welcome back to another part in our series of videos where we talk about what you can do with your Terra Master NAS in TOS. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to install and set up Plex Media Server on your Terra Master NAS for the very first time. And this is the latest part of my series of videos on this particular NAS platform, so I do recommend you check out those other parts in order to make the most of your NAS system. But without further ado, let's get started. The first thing you need to do is head into the file manager area and make sure you've separated your media into the right folders. So if you've not already uploaded your NAS media onto the system, go ahead and upload it using the upload option here, uploading it in folders or mapping it as a network drive as shown in our earlier videos. When you're uploading the media onto your NAS, do try to separate them accordingly. So have a separate folder for movies, TV shows, music and more. And also make sure you keep note of where that folder is on your NAS as it's going to be useful later. If you're about to create a brand new location for the media on the NAS, it's highly recommended that you create a brand new shared folder in order to store that media. If you store the media in a normal folder, there's no guaranteeing that Plex Media Server is going to be able to see it unless you create that folder in an existing shared media folder. Okay, so again, once you've uploaded the media onto your NAS, whether you're dragging and dropping it into the screen or creating that mapped network drive and sending it over, the next thing you need to do is head towards the App Center. Again, the App Center in the Applications tab. If you go down into the All Settings here, let the list of available applications on their Application Center appear and scroll down until you find Plex Media Server and then click the install button. It will only take a single click to install that application. It may ask you to verify whether you want to double like confirm that installation, but simply clicking it will install the application and when it's ready, it will appear on the desktop like so. And here it is here on the desktop. Next, we need to open the Plex Media Server app in order to continue the installation. Just click it there on screen. As you see there on screen, a new window has appeared and it will ask you about Plex Media Server and whether you're ready to continue with this application, knowing that some of the features of Plex are a little bit more aggressive and need more hardware resources such as transcoding in order to, be, to perform. If you're happy to go ahead with that, click enter and a new tab will open. This new tab will ask you to either enter your existing Plex Media Server information or it will ask you to register a brand new account. So either you will see this screen here if you're already logged in on that system and we're using our disposable Gmail account here, or you will see this screen which asks you to either register and create a brand new account or log in with a different service provider. In my case, I'm gonna go ahead with that disposable Google account there. Once you've created the account or used your existing Plex Media Server account to log in on the previous screen, the NAS will begin its connection with the Plex.tv service. This is Plex and your online service being synchronized. This can take upwards of a few minutes or it can be done very quickly, depending on the complexity of your NAS, the strength of your bandwidth and internet, and just general time management as the two are connected. If this page doesn't refresh after a few minutes, you can refresh this link here at the top and that should either restart the whole process that we've done on this browser tab or it will kickstart and refresh the page. As you can see, refreshing it there allowed us to make sure that connection was established. Go ahead on and click got it. From here, it will ask you to give a name for this Plex Media Server, NAS. Now, you don't have to name it, and you can keep it as default if you choose, but again, that's up to you. Also, if you intend to access this Plex Media Server, NAS, from outside of your home network, such as accessing it in coffee shops, hotels, and more, make sure you tick this box, as this will allow Plex to attempt to configure an open port on the NAS so it can communicate. So moving forward, if ever you're accessing Plex Media Server, what you'll actually be accessing is Plex's own online database when then it will communicate with your NAS. Go ahead and click Next. Once that's done, 
Plex will get ready to establish that name for the Plex Media Server Identification and start to begin the process of opening that remote access point to Plex Media Server. Do bear in mind as it states that if the NAS is turned off, you won't be able to access your library. Again, this can take um, minutes or it can take seconds depending on the strength of your internet connection. Once it's done, a new tab will open like so, asking you to add your media library. This is why it was important for you to not only remember where you uploaded all your TV shows, box sets and more, but also separated them into individual folders. Click Add Library and from here, add which kind of media you want to add first. Let's add films. From here, go to the Add Folders box and then click here and it will list the available folders on your NAS. Scroll through and find the shared folders that you created earlier. In my case, I created this shared folder here. So again, if you go onto MD0, that's gonna be the default volume and find your folder. In my case, it's this one. I go into Plex Media Server and then I find my movies folder. Again, remember, your folder structure will be different to my own. Another thing to bear in mind, when you are uploading media to your NAS, do remember that when you do add multimedia to different areas, such as adding multiple movies to your movies folder, that the contents of this folder do not need to be selected. All you need to do is select the parent folder. So in the case of Plex, if I want to add all of my movies, I just need to add the movies um, archive and folder, just selecting movies. I won't need to add all the individual folders. Click the advanced tab to enable some of the many user interface and experience add-ons from Plex, depending on whether you have the free Plex account or a paid Plex Pass Premium, which allows you to add trailers, further information, get more metadata from different sources, as well as choose where you want your metadata to come from. Once you've gone through the options that you want to utilize for your Plex Media Server and the presentation, such as the resources and where reviews come from, go to the bottom and click library. And that will add that movie library. Repeat these steps for different media types. So for example, if I go ahead and this time add TV shows, not only will it allow me to add TV shows as a brand new directory, but also the options have changed as these are better suited to box sets and TV shows and more when that comes to scraping metadata and others. Next, we can add music, which again has its own preset selection of different subfolders and different options within Plex Media Server to create your music Plex Media Server to enjoy it. Again, more related to cover art, imported from iTunes for information and graphics and thumbnails and more. All of these are all readily available, but again, Plex Pass members will probably have more information open to them and more configuration choices. Finally, we can add photos if we choose, and the Photos folder will allow us to access our collection of photos that are stored on the NAS, as well as allow uh, tagging and linking to other services. So if we go forward and we link there and go to the Advanced tab, we can see that not only can we tag photos to keep them together, but we can add on other services as well. And there you go, we've added those four directories, and then we click Next. If you want to add um, Plex to mobile devices, desktop devices, for Amazon Fire Stick, console and more, you can go to the Get Plex Apps and it will allow you to download the app and the client application for all of your devices. Plex is supported on Amazon Fire Stick, Roku, mobile phones, iOS, Android, Windows, PlayStation 5, Xbox, you name it. So this will allow you to access the contents of your NAS via all of those devices. So click Get Plex Apps if you want to download the applications for those devices, or click Done to continue. As you can see, this is the Plex Media Server interface. On the left-hand side of the screen, you may not have all of the same options as me. As I connect to multiple NASes, I've got more options available. If you can't see your NAS listed here, which in my case is listed under T NAS, go to the bottom and click the More tab and this will list individual servers that you may be sharing with others or that you've added to your Plex account. There's the TNAS right there, and I click it, and there you go. It's now started adding all the media that I've asked it to index. It's also using those online databases that I told it to use in order to scrape metadata. 
So for example, in Reservoir Dogs here, we've got the cover art for the movie, we've got reviews and information from Rotten Tomatoes and more, we've also got information on the casting and reviews from individual sources, trailers, soundtracks and more. All of that scraped online at no additional cost. If we want to play the file, we can play it there. There's a few configuration options as well. If we want to change any of the choices we've made during the setup of our NAS, whether that's to do with the whole NAS itself, changing configuration for encoding to transcoding, or how some of the folders are handled, simply select your NAS on the list there, and then click the three dots. Those three dots will allow you to select the option Manage Server, whereupon you can select the Settings menu, or if you want to refresh all of the media and the thumbnails and data and more, you can clean the database, but for now, select Settings. From settings, it will allow you to configure a lot of the different options on your NAS, whether that is that you want to enable transcoding and therefore allow media to be changed on the fly, although do bear in mind it will utilize a lot more hardware resources in order to do that. Alternatively, you can allow your Plex Media server to be accessed just on the network rather than relying on internet connectivity by clicking this box here. If you want to change any of the libraries that you've set up so far, you can go into the library tab and change how some of the metadata is scraped. Alternatively, you can click the manage libraries tab and this will allow you to edit or add other libraries for your Plex Media server NAS in order to coordinate. When you're ready to go back to the main menu, just select the home tab. And there you go. There is our Plex Media server. We've got films, we've got our music, we have got our photos, we've got our TV programs and all, all of which indexed and sequenced beautifully thanks to Plex Media Server on TOS and our Terra Master NAS. And that ends our tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, chuck me a like, it really helps. Otherwise, click the subscribe button and the bell to be notified about future, further releases in our coverage of Terra Master NAS along with other brands and take advantage of the free advice section linked in the description if you need help with your network or data storage. Go down there, it's a link, it's completely free, we do nothing with your email, and it's manned by two humans, me and Eddie the web guy. We'll answer your inquiries, there's a donate button, use it or ignore it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.